All right, so everybody loves top 10 lists. Am I right? I love them. Anyway, um, this isn't going to be clickbaity, I swear. This is going to be a top 10 list of unconventional items that every photographer should have at their photo studio. So this isn't a top 10 list of just items you should have at your photo studio, like camera, lights, light modifiers, stands. Everybody knows that. It's like, come on. But I wanted to create a top 10 list of unconventional items that you should have at your photo studio that you may not have even thought of. Um, so whether you're a beginning photographer and maybe you just have a room in your house or a garage that you have sort of a home studio or all the way up to a pro photographer with their own studio. Maybe there's an item or two on this list that you haven't thought of or you're like, you know, I should have that on hand. Uh, that's why I wanted to create this top 10 list. So here's a top 10 list of unconventional items that every photographer should have at their studio. Hey everyone, it's Mike here from Mike McGee Photography. Okay, um, I've had my studio for quite some time and I'm gonna get right into the top 10 list, but I just wanted to state that I'm a portrait, headshot, fashion photographer. I do a little bit of product, fitness. Uh, I shoot people primarily. So uh, if you also shoot people primarily, that's kind of what this is geared towards, a little bit of product photography, but primarily this is a top 10 list of unconventional items for shooting portraits, people. So uh, without any further ado, Let's just get right into it. All right, so number 10 is a clothing rack, all right? So I'm gonna show you a quick little shot of my clothing rack that's at my studio. Now, I have a very small studio. I live in the Bay Area where, uh, you know, a one bedroom studio is like $14 million, but uh, so I have a kind of a limited amount of space. Well, I just created a small little clothing rack, which is essentially just uh, two, two shelf hooks underneath the shelf with a dowel that I cut and I uh, stained it and put some end caps on it. Um, then I bought some hangers for it. Uh, but as you shoot more and more people, people need to hang clothing, especially if you're doing fashion. Oh my God. So uh, I just bought about 20 specialized hangers that are at Ikea that are all the same color and such. And uh, I didn't want to go mommy dearest and uh, Joan Crawford with the wire hangers. Don't do wire hangers. Come on, don't, don't. You'll even see some lines and it can actually make impressions into the, into the fabric. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, a simple clothing rack is something that you should definitely have at your studio. And besides having a dedicated tiny little clothing rack like I have, you could have a portable clothing rack that they sell. Those, those wired clothing racks that have wheels on it. And if you have quite a bit of space, you can just wheel it out if it's that type of shoot where you might be hanging coats and things like that and just wheel it away. Um, things like this just add some professionalism as well as become a necessity, especially when you're doing fashion and you need to have all the clothing lined up and to see what you're shooting. There you go. All right, so number nine is a weed sprayer. What? A weed sprayer? Hear me out. I made a video about this. I'll put it in the upper corner. Now, what do you use a weed sprayer for? Well, you use a weed sprayer for any fabric backdrops, primarily like muslin backdrops um, and the like, where when you pull them out of their little suitcase or their case, they're usually littered with wrinkles all over there they become problematic because you got to get the wrinkles out and a weed sprayer is the absolute best way to get those wrinkles out again you can watch that dedicated video but for a brief summary you just heat it up with hot water about so to speak right there pump away to build up a little pressure you hang your muslin backdrop or any sort of fabric backdrop on your backdrop rack spray it and within 30 seconds tops right before your very eyes the wrinkles will just magically fade away uh it's a lifesaver when you have to do sort of some let's say a client goes oh we we wanted to do the gray backdrop but let's do the the red muslin backdrop and you're like okay i gotta pull that thing out and it is littered with wrinkles uh a weed sprayer in that case is a godsend for just getting those wrinkles out immediately uh on your shoot so there it is number nine a weed sprayer all right we have number eight drum roll is here and number eight is a collection of binder clips binder clips yeah binder clips these guys so I have a bin as you can see full of just binder clips and I have assorted sizes I'll put a link in the description I have big ones small ones you can get them at Staples Amazon Home Depot whatever I don't know about Home Depot Office Max um, anyway these binder clips are kind of essential and I got little tiny ones too what they're used for if you shoot fashion or if you shoot let's say headshots and portraits and a client comes in and they're 
and their dress shirt, let's say, is a little too wide, a little sloppy, a little oversized, right? You don't have time to tailor that. And no matter what you do, if you do even a headshot or just a portrait like this, if you have sloppy sort of oversized outfits, it's just not gonna work right. So all you have to do is take some of these binder clips, you just do a little fold in the back, you pinch it, and once you do, when you, you from the back, you just do a little pinch, and all of a sudden it's gonna tailor those, those, that loose clothing to kind of give it a more completely tailored and fitted look. It's not gonna look sloppy that way, especially for headshots. You don't want things too sloppy. You can also pull a shirt back and then sort of give it a binder clip so that it, a shirt with a collar that's just riding uh, you know a little too far forward that sort of thing it just these binder clips keep everything in place and they're in the back to where you're not going to see them in the shot on occasion you may if a client turns a little bit to the left or a model especially is doing some pose you may see a binder clip you got to take it out in post but the alternative is just sloppy unkempt kind of oversized outfits that just don't look great so uh get a nice collection of assorted binder clips and make sure you have those in your studio all right, and that brings us to number seven, which is, as you can probably guess, apple boxes, okay? Apple boxes are it's probably less on the unconventional side. Most portrait photographers probably have a set of apple boxes, multiple sets of apple boxes. But if you're just starting out, you might think like, well, I wouldn't need an apple box. Why would I need apple boxes? Well, a set of apple boxes is kind of crucial because um, it can be used for so many things. They can get beat up. Look at this thing. This thing is just all scratched up, it's beat up. It's fine, it almost gives it more character the more it's beat up. But it gives you sort of things that you can have a, a client rest their arm on, put underneath their, their foot, um, they can sit on them, you can angle them in different ways, you can get plain wood. So I got this one, it was absolute bare wood. It was a full set of apple boxes. Um, it was plain wood, I just stained it sort of like a mahogany stain, just because I think that's kind of timeless and, and works really well. But uh, yeah, you could stain a cherry, you can have multiple sets, and you got your pancakes, you got your, um, your full size, you got all kinds here. And what these do is they're configurable. So let's say you're even doing product photography. Well, the beauty of a full set of Apple boxes is that when you need a level surface or you have something that you need to sort of prop up in ways, you can mix and match these different sizes of Apple boxes to accommodate that level feel that you need to shoot. Um, so I use these for product photography all the time. I use them for portrait photography. I'll show a couple of samples. Uh, these shots that I took right here, um, look, the model's actually just sitting on the Apple boxes. So uh, they, they work as in lieu of a stool. Um, and in fact, in this shot right here, this is a shot with Andy, uh, you don't see the Apple box in the shot, but I remember he was on a stool and he was saying, um, yeah, you know, like I remember he just wasn't getting in the right spot. It didn't it didn't really feel right. And I said, hey, let me throw an apple box under your foot. And that allowed him to sort of lean in and sort of engage the lens a little bit more. And that simple little apple box that he put his foot underneath uh, kind of transformed the shot, really. I, I really like this shot. Um, but uh, yeah, simple apple boxes. Have a full set, stain them. Uh, this is one thing you never want to DIY. Never DIY an apple box set. This is just a bonus little tip. Uh, splinters, wood. It's not worth it. Rounded edges are, are perfect when they come, when you buy a full set. Just buy a full set, get them, get them stained, or bare wood's fine. But uh, apple boxes is something every portrait or headshot photographer should have in their studio. All right, we're at number six. Well, this is kind of an easy one, but you know, I overlooked this for quite some time. It's a simple notebook. A notebook or a smartphone with a notes app. What am I trying to say here? Well, what you want to do is when you set up lighting setups, you have to document them. And I'm talking, like I keep a notepad right here, and so when I do sort of a creative, artistic color gel shoot, like some of these shots you're seeing right now, uh, what I do is I have to write down, what's my key light? How far away is it from the model? How far away is it from uh, the, the background wall? What's the power set to? Uh, approximately how high is the strobe? Am I using a gridded soft box? Am I using a strip box? That's for key light number one. Okay, my, my hair light or my rim lights or my any sort of background lights, you wanna make sure you take accurate notes and it just starts with something as simple as a notepad so that that way you don't have to always reinvent the wheel 
when you have to another shot because what's going to happen is you may do some creative shot with a, a even a test shoot with a model or you do something creative and it's fun and uh you, you dial in some lights and you go wow this works really great you post them on instagram and then you never know somebody will say hey i want to do a, sh a shoot like that uh how much is it and they want to book you well you're going to say I don't remember what it was like, but if you take notes of every lighting setup that you have, and it starts with just a simple note, I like, I'm old, you know, I'm old. I use an actual notepad, but uh, you can use the, the notes app on your phone to make sure that you document each and every lighting setup so that you can re refer back to it because you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel each and every time. So it starts with a simple notepad. All right, we're at number five now. Number five is a simple, tiny clothing steamer. Make sure you have one of these in your studio. I have a tiny one. I mean, it has a small little water reservoir. I can put a link in the description for this exact one if you want. But um, it is invaluable when clients show up and they have, let's say, a, they have a top that is gonna work perfectly and it, it has wrinkles in it or a dress shirt or something like that. Hang it on your clothing rack from number 10 and you just hang it on the clothing rack. Use a handheld steamer and you only need a small one because again, what's the big deal? You just keep filling up the reservoir. This probably works for about one shirt, right? But that's all you need. Something tiny, tuck it away in your studio and you just turn it on in about two to three minutes. It starts steaming and you just gracefully go over it as you kind of pull and stretch. It will get those those wrinkles out, it saves you hours in post of trying to work out wrinkles or any sort of like imperfections in the clothing and the linen. You just wanna keep that in mind before a shoot that the clothing matters, the, the, the actual quality of the clothing matters. So you wanna make sure that you, you steam it out and uh, everything's looking pristine so that when you shoot, you're saving all that post-production time of trying to fix flaws when a client goes, oh, I didn't realize there's like tons of wrinkles on this. Can you fix that? Can you Photoshop it? You know, we've all heard that where it's just magic where you just go, done. No, it's like, it takes time. So this will save you hours and hours of time and it's dirt cheap and it's just a small little handheld steamer. Get one of those for your steamer. All right, we're up to number four. Now what's number four? Well, essentially this is kind of a collective. It, is a group of problem solvers, primarily a Swiss army knife, okay? As you do more and more shoots, you're gonna realize you're ending up doing a lot of problem solving, right? There are problems that crop up on the fly, such as something where you need a screwdriver, you need a flathead screwdriver, you need a knife, you, know, you even need a corkscrew, you need a tiny little wrench. Have a Swiss, this thing has saved my butt so many times. Have a Swiss army knife just tucked away somewhere in your studio. You could have an Ikea toolkit with, with wrenches and things like that. That also works. Just some sort of simple all-in-one toolkit, which I find is just the easiest as, as a Swiss army knife. Uh, um, have something like that. Now I kind of collectively associated problem solvers with this particular uh, number, but you're gonna want like tons of clamp. I have so many of these clamps and you want gaffer's tape, you want all the basics, you know, these are just clamps. But a lot of times when I remember when I was starting out, I would get like, like two clamps, three clamps, whatever. You're gonna find out you need tons of these things. You can even see the clamps that are probably hanging over my shoulders, probably softened out with a little shallow depth of field action. But even on that, that light right here, there's a couple of clamps just because the, the cord's flying around, you just wanna clamp it down. You're going to want just clamps, problem solvers, knives, tools, screwdrivers, sandpaper, things like that that I just kind of all call the, the Swiss Army knife of uh, problem solving. So you want problem solvers to make each shoot go smoothly and if something should arise, you can easily address it with all these little sort of problem solvers. All right, so we're up to number three. All right, well, number three is very similar to the steamer that I talked about and it's very simple. It's a lint roller. Get a lint roller, get actually multiple lint rollers and have these at your studio. You wanna make sure that when a client shows up, if they have a black shirt and they have a cat and you're doing headshots, you are going to be just, if you don't have a lint roller, you're gonna be in post trying to get out every little flaw. And sometimes you don't really see them in person, those little little flaws that are on, especially a black top. Um, and you'll, you won't see it in person. And then as you know, you pixel peep 
on your shot, you'll look, you'll zoom in and you'll think, God, how did I not see that? Well, a nice little lint roller, one, two, three lint rollers, just have a bunch ready to go and just tell that client, oh yeah, you wanna just take that if you have a dark colored top, just get a little bit of that lint off there. Um, it will work wonders to save you tons of Photoshop and post-production time um, to have a couple of these. They're cheap, just have them at your studio um, and that'll save you hours of Photoshop time. All right, we're at number two already. Okay, so number two, what is it? Well, it's cheap hair care products. When I say cheap, I mean the stuff you buy at the supermarket that's on sale and it's a manager special and it's out, going out of business, whatever. Now, I covered up the brand because it's not really brand specific. Just get the cheapest stuff you can possibly get. You wanna have gel, you wanna have mousse, and you wanna have hairspray. Now, when a client shows up on site, if you're doing a fashion shoot, most likely you have a hair and makeup artist. Okay, no problem, you don't need it for that. But for a client shoot, you're doing headshots, you're, or you're just doing a one-on-one -on -one trade shoot with somebody or something like that, um, you're, let's say somebody shows up and their hair is just a little disheveled, it's not looking as nice as it could, well, you wanna use some hair care products. However, you want the cheap junk, really, because you don't want it to stay for three hours. You don't want the highest end, um, hair care products that are going to just stay in there and be just you know when gel just sort of has that look after like an hour of just being like on a on an 80s kind of sitcom vibe no you want it to where it holds for about five ten minutes and then you could just shake it out you could do whatever and then if you needed to you could reapply it but you don't want it to almost hold so well that then for any future looks or a change of hairstyle you're kind of screwed so uh, this stuff is just again this is considered extreme hold, but extreme hold for like the supermarket brand is like me. So just get the lightest hold you want. Um, this stuff works well for me. Um, I've had this in my studio for a while and you only need it on rare occasions. So um, it's just to have that sort of safety net of like a, a cheaper brand quality stuff so you can use it, shoot it, and then move on and not have your hair, uh, the client's hair just locked in place. So get some cheap hair care products. All right, and the drum roll, please. This is number one of the number one unconventional item you absolutely should have at your studio. Hang on. Ta-da! It is a mannequin. Mannequin torso, mannequin head, whatever you can get your hands on to help you setting up and dialing in lighting setups. Now, I got this mannequin for like 40 bucks on Craigslist. I'm gonna say like, God, like six, seven years ago, something like that. Uh, and this mannequin has been invaluable to me in setting up different lighting setups before a client arrives on set. So if you're one of those types of people like me that shoots a variety of different styles of photography, different portraits, um, then you're probably gonna need something like this because you're gonna have a bunch of different setups that, that you can't possibly always have in a fixed set up at your studio unless you have a giant warehouse studio or something like that but um you know let's say if you just did headshots then maybe you have your headshot lighting set up set up the entire time and a client just comes in it's all dialed in you're ready to go you're ready to go and you never break down your set that's fine you probably don't need a, a mannequin torso like like i would but um for somebody like me you do you know fitness shoots you do um headshots you do portraits you do all sorts of creative lighting setups things like that you're gonna have vastly different lighting setups from day to day. So how do you know before a client shows up if they say, oh, I want one of those creative hypercolor headshots or something like that? Well, all you do is you set up this mannequin and as you can see, I don't know if you can see, she's actually on a stool with an apple box on top of that. So as I said before, these apple boxes just have different heights and that allows me to just have it set up easily for you guys to see. But um, I always use a mannequin to set up my lights and then as a final setup i just put a stool little apple box put the mannequin there do a couple of test pops and go yeah looks perfect and then that way the client shows up you look professional you're not stressing to think oh is something going to be off when i actually when the client actually shows up you're confident you're, you're ready to go because you know what it's going to look like so this is hands down by far the number one thing i think every portrait headshot photographer should have at their studio and that is a mannequin torso slash head. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. That's my top 10 list of unconventional, semi-unconventional items that every photographer should have at their either home or 
professional photo studio and um, there's a couple of honorable mentions I mean you always have to have tons of extension cords just more than you think batteries just coming out of rechargeable batteries and chargers just everywhere Bluetooth speakers for music all these kind of things that are you know you just want to make a nice experience for everybody when they come in your studio and shoot there's so many more an assistance you could have that uh, you know tons of reflectors V flats all those little things that make your studio even more inviting and professional. But um, I'm sure there's plenty that I left out. If you have any favorites, do you have any favorite unconventional items that are for a studio? If you do, post it in the description. I'd love to hear it. I, I love to learn things too. So um, I welcome any feedback. Uh, if you like this video, please click like, give it a thumbs up, what have you. If you like this video and want to see other videos like that, you can click subscribe. Um, I want to thank you for watching the video and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.